Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 17 career mode with Southampton. Today will be the final day that I am using EA Early Access to record with the game coming out on Tuesday in North America. So after today's episode, I'll be able to fully dive into the career mode and really put as much practice into the game as I would like to. Leading up to this point, I have had to be very strict in my recording in order to get enough episodes out for you guys. But after today, I'm really ready to dive into this career mode. That does mean I can get some other kinds of videos out for you all, but besides the Southampton crew mode, whether that's other game modes like pro clubs or ultimate team or career mode specific content. So if you guys want to help me out, go ahead and drop a comment down below on what other kinds of content you want to see outside of this Southampton save. But getting into today's press conference relative to the Southampton save, we have a question from Liam asking about pre-contract deals in January. If you guys are not familiar with the concept of pre-contracts, basically if a player's contract is expiring in six months or less and he's over 23 years old, you have the possibility of offering a contract deal and in the next season he would join your club so basically you can pick up players on a free without paying that transfer fee and only having to pay their wages it's a pretty good way to build up your squad but it can also get crew modes very unrealistic very quickly and i don't want to do that in season two of southampton i definitely want to make some big signings maybe even bring in some former players back into the club but i plan on making some realistic pre-contract deals that won't kill this crew mode touching back on the charlie austin situation although i do regret selling him at the start of this crew mode save I don't think bringing him back into the club in January would be the best option for us and also for his career development. If we weren't to give him starting playtime consistently, it would only continue to stunt his growth and his development as a player. And as the team does progress, I'm looking to sign better players than Charlie Austin. Although I rate him in real life and he's in fantastic form right now for Southampton, he's not the best player in FIFA 17. But lately, one of the best players who are in form relative to the save is on our team in Jay Rodriguez. And because he's back Bagging in so many goals, I want to keep giving him playtime, wherever that may be, whether that's at his default left wing or left mid position, or whether we have to play him at striker or right wing, I want to get him into the starting 11. And by the way, I do see your guys' comments saying I should give Dusan Tadic more playtime in our team. The real question is where I should play him, because we have a lot of quality players. I don't want to remove James Ward-Prowse from the center attack in mid, because he's the future of this team. What I think I'm going to have to do is take Nathan Redman off of that right wing spot, put him on the bench, and then play Dusan Tadic at right right wing. Although that's not his default position, I think he can still perform really well there. At the end of the day, squad rotation is going to be the make or break thing for this career mode save. Playing in all these kinds of competitions is not something we here at Southampton are too familiar with. Usually we have to focus on the league and the domestic cup, but now we have to factor in Europe into play. In order to balance all those different competitions, we need to rely on our youth and all the players that don't usually get first team action to perform well when they do get called upon. But that will be all the press conference questions for today. Again, and thank you guys so much for the support you are leaving on this series. Your support has been absolutely fantastic, and I'm ready to push on with today's career mode episode. A forecast for today's episode will see us on a week and a half long break to start things off after a very strenuous schedule in yesterday's episode, but I'm actually going to be simulating our first Premier League match of the season against the newly promoted Burnley. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely going to be playing the vast majority of matches in this career mode save, but simulating the odd match will allow us to progress a little bit more quickly through the season with Southampton. So the first match we will actually be playing in game will be against Krasnodar in the EuroLeague group stage, then a game against Manchester City in the Premier League, ending things off with a match against Bristol City. I've been checking back regularly to try to find the missing piece to our scouting network puzzle, and finally we have found another five-star, five-star scout, and another one from England, which is pretty cool considering we are an English-based club, so we will be adding Brandon Harris to our scouting network. Looking over your comments, I saw quite a few requests asking me to scout out Africa, and considering how well Nigeria's youth team have been playing, and the number of Nigerian talents making their way into the Premier League, I think they are are the perfect country to scout out so we're gonna be sending a scout there for three months looking again for a physically strong player in regards to the global transfer network we currently have scouts in Spain Germany and England but we still have three more to send out and I want to make sure I cover the bases for the five major leagues in the world so we still need to send a scout to Italy and also to France and for the final country to scout out I think I'm gonna send them to Turkey I've had some good success there in the past we're gonna try it out again in FIFA 17 speaking of our youth squad I wanted to let you guys know that I have identified Callum Morgan as our number one prospect 
for goalkeeper. We're going to let him sit in the youth academy a little bit so his potential can stabilize. I don't want to train him right away because apparently that can stunt their growth. It didn't take long for the United States to offer up international management to me, but for this season, I'm only going to be focusing on the club here at Southampton. We have a lot to do and a lot to focus on, and I don't want to get distracted by international management. We have our first monthly scouting update attached from our scout in Serbia looking for a physically strong player. I have changed the view of this. I prefer this layout than the other ones, just easier to keep track of all the players. But our first player here is a 44 to 66 overall, 57 to 77 potential. We're not going to be signing him. But right away, we have a 78 to 94 potential player in Ivan Stepanak. He could be an incredible signing to the team. And of course, I will be adding him to our youth academy. Following him up, we have a 62 to 86 potential, 71 to 94. So two great signings already. And to close things out, a 55 to 77. Getting into the simulated match against Burnley, I'm feeling confident because we have a lot of players in great form. However, Burnley have been in decent form as well, having beaten Arsenal in the recent run of form. But getting into the game, hopefully we can get a couple of goals, maybe even through Jay Rodriguez again in this match. But it's Ward Prowse to score on a penalty. But Barnes answers right away, only seven minutes later later and we go into the second half. Rodriguez bags himself a goal and continuing his goal scoring ability now the last 20 minutes of the game we just need to play defensive and hang on for this result. Couple of goals at the end but we end up getting a win in a very high scoring game 3-2. to two. With our game against Manchester City in two or three days I wanted to bring out a rotated side for this match against Krasnodar. We're in perfect form so far in the EuroLeague and if we can get a win here that would put us on nine points out of three games but we still have some quality players in this team including Braithwaite who by the way you guys do want as your starting striker. I'm going to keep that in mind as we start thinking about Premier League matches. But considering Jay Rodriguez's form, I'm going to be starting him against Manchester City. But we have Ward Prowse wearing the captain's armband. We'll see if he can continue his goal-scoring form and get another one in this match. Returning home to St. Mary's, we're going to look to put on a show for the fans enduring the English weather in the rain, and I'll be counting on some of our youngsters to bag some goals. Corner kick for us early in the game. We have Braithwaite on the near post. We'll see if we can do a driven one, and for it to work out, that was a spectacular effort by Braithwaite, and I think we're going to score one of those bicycle kick goals by the end of the season. Here's Harry Reid. Playing it to the left. It's Sam McQueen now finding Braithwaite, and Trasenor pressing up very high. But that may leave them susceptible to the through ball. It's Braithwaite. Can he run away with this one? The near post shot, and that will be a penalty kick. Poor challenge by the defender, and it was really unnecessary. A red card as well, and I think Crossendor's chances today are pretty much done if we can convert on this penalty kick. We'll let James Ward Prowse step up to take this one. Our penalty luck has not been great so far, but we're going to look to run up and blast this one to the corner. That's our first decent penalty. Goalkeeper could have gotten there if he dove the right way, but he stayed rooted to the spot, and it's 1-0 for us. Nice start to the game by James Ward Prowse. It was a good first half in terms of dictating the play, and we do get rewarded with that goal from the penalty kick. As we get forward to the second half, I'll look to make a couple of substitutions, but not quite yet because the current team is doing their job job and if they can add on another goal before I make those substitutions we'll be sitting really well. With it being the 60th minute I'm going to start thinking about our next fixture at Manchester City so I want to take off some players that I might want to feature in that game including Ward Prowds at center attacking mid. We'll bring on Sally Uchan for him and along with that I think we'll be also be taking out Braithway and see who we have available at striker. It will be Shane Long coming on. Despite Crossnor being down to 10 men, they've played pretty well in this game. And outside of that error by that player to be sent off and forcing a penalty kick, they played a good game and we have not been able to break them down defensively. But our own defense has also played well. Haven't really given them too many chances. To close out the game in the final 10 minutes, I'll be making one more substitution and Sam McQueen not having his best day. So we'll be taking him off and bringing on the man in form and Jay Rodriguez. Shane Long looking to find Jay Rodriguez on the left and he's just on a level above everyone else on the pitch right now just dancing by defenders and it took three players to take that ball away. What is Trostendor doing? It's going to be a goal off probably the strangest bit of play I've seen so far this season. I don't know what they were thinking and that even took a deflection on the way in but Romeo has had a fantastic game in terms of his defense. He deserves a goal in this one. Our perfect record in the EuroLeague continues with another win 2-0 against Krasnodar. Looking at the player ratings, my man of the match would probably be Romeo or Ward Prowse but Braithwaite actually got it after being subbed off with an 8.4 rating. Ward Prowse not far behind with an 8.1. Our final use scouting report looking for an English goalkeeper has come through and we have a 64 to 88 potential to start things off 65 to 89 63 to 87 another 65 to 89 57 to 79 
50 to 70, and finally a 76 to 94 to close things out with Bradley Jackson. We'll be adding him to the Youth Academy, and that'll close things out for England. With that scouting report coming to an end, I think it's about time we scout out North America and my home country in the United States. We're going to experiment a bit and look for an attacker this time, searching it up for three months. Still looking to chase down Spurs for that top spot in the Premier League. We'll have to get through Manchester City and the likes of David Silva first. But taking a look at our team management, I'm pretty excited to try out this team. Still rocking the 4-3-3 formation, but we have made a change and brought in Tadic at right wing. We'll see if he can continue the kind of form he had when he was getting regular playtime. Of course, Manchester City is off to an amazing start so far this season under the management of Pep Guardiola, but they're not doing quite as stellar. Spurs are the team to beat so far in this FIFA 17 career mode save, but we are currently the best defensive team in the Premier League, and we're going to try to stay true to that in this game. City do use a more defensive version of the 4-3-3 formation, so they will be tough to break down, but we need to make sure that we hang out to as much possession as possible, look to find those channels, and get a couple of goals through the inform J. Rodriguez. Ufel looking to play this one off to the right. It's going to be Bertrand playing essentially to Ward Prowse, who's looking to dictate the play in the center of the park. Now it's Jay Rodriguez using some of that pace and shielding the ball away from the Manchester City players. Now it's Cedric pushing up, playing essentially. If someone can make that run in the channel, Toye playing it through. Jay Ward Prowse trying to play it once again in the middle. Couple of deflections made on the way in. We're still with it though, but David Silva eventually gets it cleared. But we're looking great so far in this game. If we can keep on passing the way we are, we will get a goal. Playing essentially. Nice pass to find Tadic. Tadic now playing it over to Hoybie. He'll play it to the left. It's Buffele. Seeing the run in the middle, it just needs to be a finish. And what a shot, but what a save by Caballero. Not the player you'd expect in the net for Manchester City, but he pulls off an amazing save right there. Hoybie finding Klossi, trying it off to the right. It's going to be Tadic getting around the Manchester City player. Burba spinning inside. It's going to be a finesse shot, and it's 1-0. Great bit of passing play, and Tadic showing why he deserves a starting role, and I'm going to keep on starting him if he's in the form he is. Hoybie. Again, making the run and playing this one through. What a through ball over to Jay Rodriguez. He's just the player I want in this kind of position. He was trying to play in the middle to Biffel, but it was John Stones to make the block. And we're going to try to send this one into the near post. Will it work out for us? And again, we're trying out that bicycle kick, and it needs to work out one of these times, but we might be able to keep it in. And John Stones eventually gets hold of possession. Manchester City, I think they're worrying a little bit because the pressure is just getting to him. Here we go again. This could be a chance. As Jordi Klassi making a great run and a through ball to find Hoybier. Can he shoot this one far post? And he tries it, but that is the end of the first half. A dominant first half for us in terms of the possession stats. And also the scoreline 1-0 is the advantage going into halftime. We'll take a look at the statistics real quickly before jumping in to the next 45. 69% of the possession, not very Pep Guardiola-esque for Manchester City in the first 45 minutes. Only one change to make for us at halftime. We'll bring Sully Uchan in for Hoy Bie. And I'm feeling like Sully Uchan, it's time for him to score a goal for us here at Southampton. Maybe he can get it for us against Manchester City. Here's Fernando finding Raheem Sterling on the left. He's going to cross this one in. And that's a tap-in goal for who is that? Kun Aguero. He got lucky for that to take a deflection. Actually, it was David Silva getting in the right place at the right time. And Manchester City, it must have been a pep talk at halftime because they came in with a different tactic entirely. Raheem Sterling has been the difference maker for Manchester City. And we're going to find have to find a way to contain him if we do want to get the winning result in this one. Sending in the cross. Well done by Ryan Bertrand to get it clear. And Buffel looking to start the counterattack for us. Getting by a couple of players. And really no one showing for him. Holding it up. Finding Jordi Klassi, now Ward Prowse. If our fullback can make that run, this could be a lot of space. And now it's Ryan Bertrand, playing it centrally to Jay Rodriguez, trying to dance around a couple of players, banging this one with a powerful shot, and that one going over the crossbar. I thought that was going in. The last 25 minutes are when the quality of the managers do shine in the substitutions that they make, and I'm going to try to be one step ahead of Pep Guardiola by moving Jay Rodriguez, a center attacking mid, taking Ward Prowse and bringing on a striker in Shane Long. Finally, we're going to bring in Nathan Redman in for Tadic. Here's Fernandinho on the ball for Manchester City. We get a couple of deflections, but Cunaguero finding Nolito on the left, and Fraser Forster has to pull off a huge save for us in the 81st minute. But it will be a corner kick for Manchester City. Cross sent in. Header one and over the crossbar. Ten scenes as we close out this one, but Shane Long's gotten a steal. 
And this is one of the best opportunities we've had all game. It'll be a low cross, and it's going to be defended well by John Stones. Cleared away by Manchester City, and we make a mess of that opportunity. One more chance for us in this game. It's Nathan Redmond. Getting by a couple players, going to the byline, and crossing this one into the center. It's an open shot, and it's going to be Buffal to get the goal for us. 2-1 to one in the 90th minute, away against Manchester City. What a way to win it on the volley. Come on. I've got a smirk on my face because that was such a big-time victory against Manchester City. Away from home, and Buffal continuing his stellar play so far in the Premier League. That was his fourth goal, and he managed to get himself a 9.2 rating. We'll be closing out the episode with the game in the League Cup against Bristol City. And after that Manchester City game, I think morale is at an all-time high. The team is confident, and surely we're going to get another win. This is the round of 16 of the English Football League, so stakes are definitely starting to get a little bit higher as we progress throughout this competition, but I think the quality of our side is far superior to Bristol City. Oh, what a through ball by Romeu. And now it's Hoibye waiting for the run on the left. He's going to hold it up, and now slipping it through, it's Reed to shoot this one on the near post. Ends up winning himself a corner. Maybe he should have played it centrally, but we will try out the near post driven. Can someone get there? It's Braithwaite again. And he keeps on trying those acrobatic finishes, but Harry Reed does follow it up with the header, and we're up 1-0, only six minutes into the game. We've been dominant so far. Braithwaite playing it through. Well done to find Hoibye. Now playing it off to the left, it's Sam McQueen. Getting in an attacking-minded position, taking on the defense with a lot of confidence, playing it through to Braithwaite, and that just about worked. Sam McQueen is a different player today, and he's creating a lot of chances so far. Oh, what a through ball. And if he is onside, it could be a chance for Odauda. Ruben Semedo trying to stick with them. The shot is just inches wide. A chance for Bristol City, and they should have done better. Hoibier playing it through to Braithwaite, showing off some of his pace. Now playing it again to Hoibier. He could play this one to the channel centrally, and Lloyd Isgrove gets by a couple of players. The low shot does work out in his favor, and that is FIFA 17 tactics at its best. Nice pass, nice shot, and it's 2-0 for us before halftime. A stellar first half for us as we had six shots, two on target, two of which were goals and 52% of the possession. Moving on to the second half, I'm going to play a lot more defensively and just see this match out. Considering we have such a dominant lead, I'm going to take out two of our typical starting players in Hoibier, bring on Flanagan, who is going to make his first appearance for the team. We're also going to bring on Thierry Ambrose, who played well in the last match he played, but he'll be coming on for Braithwaite. Tomlin looking to create something. Ruben Semedo does so well, but that could have been an incredible goal. Unlucky for Bristol City, and that needs to be a wake-up call for us because during the second half, it's been all Bristol City. They're playing very high up, and that was an incredible shot. Another chance for Patterson. They have our defense split, and McCarthy pulling off another save. He wants that clean sheet today, and he's going to use those last couple of minutes to get it. If you ask me how we kept a clean sheet in that one, I wouldn't know what to tell you. But looking at some of the player ratings, I think I would have to give it to our goalkeeper in McCarthy or Harry Reid, picking up an 8.3 rating, and McCarthy not far behind. And Isgrove also putting in a great performance. But guys, that will wrap things up for today's episode of the Southampton Career Mode. If you have enjoyed today's episode, make sure you drop a like down below to show your support. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. And until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.